But when we observe the liver, we have also to uh, not forget to evaluate also the biliary tract. So the gallbladder, the common bile duct uh, have to be evaluated as well. So normally the bile is anechoic, like we can see in this area of the gallbladder. So this is all the gallbladder. But often in dogs, we have the presence of sludge in the gallbladder, which is usually normal. Uh, if we see that in cats, it's less normal, but in dogs, it's very often that we see this uh, sludge in the gallbladder. So this biliary tract can present different diseases. So we can have sediment, so in general, without creating problems for the dog. Uh, calculi are quite rare in dogs or cats compared with the, uh, in humans, but they can happen uh, sometimes. Uh, Mostly what we were looking, what we will look for in those biliary problems, it's a sign of obstruction. It will be extrahepatic obstruction. So in those uh, dogs with jaundice, we will look if there is a, an extrahepatic uh, biliary obstruction. Uh, the cause of that can be calculi, but again, that's quite rare. It will be mostly plugs. So it will be thick sludge that is creating some plugs into the uh, common bile duct. Or we can have neoplasia of the gallbladder, the common bile duct, but also of the duodenum or the pancreas that can really uh, obstruct secondarily the uh, common bile duct. Or even a pancreatitis can also create an obstruction of the common bile duct um, just because of the local inflammation. So when we have an obstruction of this common bile duct, we see that this one gets completely dilated and then it becomes visible on the ultrasound. So this common bile duct is normally not visible in dogs. So if we see it, it's already not normal. Uh, in cats, it can be visible in a normal cat, but then it has to be less than four millimeter. If it's more than four millimeter, like we have here also, uh, then it, uh, it's, it's definitely a sign of obstruction. So here we have an example of a plug that is obstructing the common bile duct that is situated there. We can have also some cholestasis in those uh, biliary uh, tract uh, diseases. Also, another important problem that we can find in the gallbladder, it's the mucosal. So it's due to an excessive accumulation of mucus in the lumen of the gallbladder. And it will create on the ultrasound a uh, typical pattern that we call either stellate, if it's um, uh, punctuated the hyperechoic hyperechoic spots in within the, the gallbladder or the kiwi fruit pattern. So that's what we mean here. It means like it uh, looks like uh, a kiwi in cross section when we cut the kiwi in half. It will look a bit uh, like that. So that's typical images here of mucosal. This one is a bit less typical, but that's uh, a mucosal information. With the, the gallbladder, we can also observe some thickening of the gallbladder wall. So it can be edema, like in this case. So in this case, we see really still the structure of the wall, but it will be a bit thick here. It's almost six millimeters, so that's definitely too much. And uh, it will, we will see those um, uh, hypoechoic lines surrounded by two hyperechoic lines. So that's typical of gallbladder wall edema. Um, this can be due to different things. In fact, it's a secondary sign to right-sided heart failure, uh, hepatitis, hypoalbuminemia. Sometimes we see it also when there is a, a, a bit of ascites in the abdomen, then we can see the ascites following the gallbladder and it can mimic the edema of the gallbladder wall. Um, we can also have a thickening of the gallbladder wall due to neoplasia, but that's quite rare. Uh, but we can mostly see it also in case of cholecystitis, like in this case. So the gallbladder wall is thickened and very irregular in surface. So that's quite typical of a cholecystitis, so an inflammation of the wall of the gallbladder. In some cases, we can have a trauma that will create a rupture, or the rupture can be also be secondary to a mucosal because then the wall of the gallbladder becomes necrotic and finally ruptures. Thank you.